Uh, yeah. Lightfall. Am I right? First off, let me let me just go ahead and start this off by saying, um, Nimbus, I love you, my my beloved Nimbus. Nimbus. Love him. Damn boy, he fit. Great character. Love him. Oh yes. Let's start with um the glaring negatives. Um, what the hell is the veil? You don't understand. We've got to get to the veil. The veil. The veil is, is where the next step. Find the veil so I can move on from this drudgery. What is the veil? The fuck if I know. You guys figure that out. It just turned to us and said, the veil, get to it. What is the veil? You know, the veil, the thing that's very important and related to the traveler. You want to expand on that? There's no time. Get to the veil. <laughs> what in the world happened to this DLC in terms of story? We had all kinds of super cool stuff and then like Rohan I thought was gonna be a cool recurring character then I'm like oh he's gonna die isn't he ever since I started the mission with the tanks and stuff whenever he's like hold on to it you need to I need your strand now and then he damn man Damn! Damn! 100% he was not gonna live through that. I, I, it was not a shocker. It was too quick. How am I supposed to feel bad about this guy? Who won, yeah, he's a badass for sure, but it's not like when Cade died. How's my hair? Cade had a few years and when Aldrin Sov shot Cave, that was at least surprise to say the least. So for Rohan to just sacrifice himself and then go <gasps> skadoosh and blow himself up, it really didn't feel like it meant much. Rohan was a very flat character because they just kind of threw him in there as the mentor that then sacrificed himself. I'm not emotionally invested in this character at all. Nimbus tries to learn. He's trying his best. And I think that's what his character arc is going to be, him learning. Uh, we're going to be dealing with Nimbus learning and growing as a character, maturing and protecting Neomuna as the sole Cloud Strider, which is a big ask if you ask me. Other faults in the story is that Callus felt kind of also unceremoniously treated, you know? Callus was a big bad from the very beginning of Destiny, and when we fought him, it felt more like just kind of circle around him, I guess, and shoot at him. The difficulty got way too hard, considering having two other people ramps up the difficulty in Legendary. It made it exceptionally difficult for the other people to stay alive, not necessarily me. Although, the Tormentors did get me a few times with the good old Suppression Slam. Prevent me from being able to jump, so I just fell in the pit of the, uh, the battle arena, right? I ended up having to do it solo. And that was a fun challenge, doing it solo. Things weren't unnecessarily tanky for three people. Let me give them props real quick. I did like how Callus was taunting you throughout the fight, making comments like, does this satisfy your suffrage or whatever, things like that. And him goading us on, him being like, this is more than my wildest imagination, showing like how his madness has devolved him to be kind of like an adrenaline junkie where he's obsessive over the guardians and how he treats us like a pet still felt really into his character everything he said or kind of acted as was very in line with what callus was and then we just kind of kill him and then the ghost just goes up and we were using Strand the whole time. So you're telling me the ghost went up and we then had Kavostov in our hands, the starter weapon? You know, I knew we weren't going to shoot our ghost, but why did we hesitate so hard when our ghost got 
uh, like uh, taken over oh, and then we could have just used our grapple ability to grab our ghost and pull it back down to prevent the witness from succeeding in its plan this felt like it was all of us just sitting around thumbs up our ass and not really acting enough you can shoot your ghost it, as long as it wasn't shot by something paracausal, the ghost won't be destroyed. I, that's that's the rule. So the Kavostov shoots conventional rifle rounds. So I don't know what the issue was shooting the ghost. Nothing really of consequence came of it. Although I really did enjoy that, that uh, the ending cutscene. The ending cutscene did uh, come off as decently threatening. And my bet is that that will be the raid. We are going to be going into the Traveler. I think it might involve Nezarek, either inside the Traveler or something connected to the Vex network and Nezarek. I'm glad Nezarek is back in play. I really thought Season of the Plunder did him dirty by turning him into a cup of tea or coffee or whatever. Those are like my biggest gripes. Passing off of the potential of Rohan's character, the oh, obsession with like the Karate Kid style montage of Strand with Osiris and spending so much time on it when so many times from Osiris himself stressing, we need to get to the veil, the veil, the veil, the veil. And they explained nothing about what the fuck the veil is. We're just left confused as hell. And now we got a black eye because we lost. So we got punched in the face. We asked, why did we get punched in the face? And they're basically like, you should know that already. That's how it feels. So let's move on to the good. The good, the gameplay, the new subclass strand, the mod, the new mod system, armor 3.0, how it doesn't require energy now and it's all universal how armor charges work i'm still a little confused but i feel like it will allow for some really cool additions to armor and builds and the build system that allows you to have saved classes so you have saved builds up to 10 slots for Come each here, character bungie thank wow, you really it's so nice to be able to save those things those armor styles those kinds of play styles and be able to quickly swap between them is an incredible addition to the game it's great uh quality of life improvements and strand itself is an addicting type of fun being able to grapple to an enemy to do a punch leading into a titan barricade to suspend them and then slice them up they explode and then you just grapple away before you get killed it's so much fun being able to do that kind of stuff they really nailed the fun aspect everything about this dlc screams fun 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 but in terms of continuity of story, it's like, they're like, oh shit, <laughs> we went too hard on the fun juice. Now we're too tipsy and can't focus on any of the story. Uh, let's focus, let's do that for the final shape. You know, let's just move that up to the final shape. And we're still going to charge full price for this DLC though. I see why it's, oh, it's mostly negative now on Steam. Um, compared to the Witch Queen. I see why, because the Witch Queen had hella crazy revelations, like story beats that genuinely blew me away. The Witness showing up, uh, Savathun's plan to seal the Traveler away from the Witness, Rolk actually being teased throughout the entirety of the campaign, and the raid and the raid lore with Rolk, and Rolk being so my good. favorite enemy like uh like boss character in destiny ever that really set the bar incredibly high and i see why people are incredibly negative about this dlc because that bar got lifted so high for so witch good. queen people were left extremely thirsty after that big meal the witch queen gave them 
They really wanted a nice drink of that strand subclass and, you know, sip on that Kool-Aid that the witness is drinking so we might be able to understand the motivations, right? But we're just left with a dry mouth and a full stomach, so it just feels really unsatisfying, this mix of, you know, having a full belly of lore from the Witch Queen, and then we can't wash any of it down with the Lightfall, you know? because uh, the final shape is supposed to be dessert. It's supposed to be the final course of this 10-year meal that uh, Destiny has been giving us for so long. So to have such a, a dry mouth after the Witch Queen, I understand why people are very upset or just mostly let down because we didn't expect mediocrity. So to have it creep back on us in the same level that Shadow Keep did, or even D2 Vanilla levels of mediocrity in terms of villain writing and stuff. Apparently, Lightfall was actually supposed to be cancelled, and Strand was supposed to come out with Witch Queen, and people are theorizing, you know, how Savathun's web weaver buffs and debuffs, and how the Traveler was trapped in a spider web, how that should have been. Um, what brought Strand? You know, and might have tied in with Deep Sight, considering how a part in the Lightfall campaign, you fix a Cloud Strider's um, monument with the power of Strand, just because there is a powerful emotional connection, which Darkness is known to be a catalyst to bring back memory. Uh, that's what most of the Darkness powers have been associated as with memory. So that connection with the Cloud Strider and the emotions we had with like the Red War and what that Cloud Strider did, I see why people are making those connections with Strand and the Witch Queen with all the webs and all the Deep Sight stuff. Deep Sight shows a different truth or a different past of what was once here now revealed because of the darkness power. So I see why people think it, it was more of a throwaway because Lightfall really was a letdown in terms of story because they really set a really heavy stage. This was supposed to be our Infinity War, but really it just felt like Ant-Man. <laughs> it just felt like a really b-side story that didn't have much of a uh, a result in terms of its delivery i guess in the end the fun carries it hard tormentors uh being a fantastic addition to the game i can't overstate how much fun it was fighting tormentors and stuff like that strand being able to move around suspending everything with the abiant leap titan exotic it it's just so much fun to use and it really opens up a lot of fun categories for how you can go about a strike and raids. So Strand carries it really hard, but the story falling as flat as it is makes the DLC, I guess, in good faith, I have to give it a 5 out of 10. You know, they nailed every aspect of the fun gameplay I never thought I'd say this, but I had incredible amounts of fun in Crucible just playing PvP. I usually never say that. The Crucible weapon that drops from it is a rapid fire frame pulse rifle that feels incredible with a great sight and fun perks. Like the PvP side of things are great. Strand is kick ass. And being able to move around like an 80s action hero genuinely did, they did capture everything in terms of the feel. Armor systems, uh, balance rework, exotics getting buffed, legendaries being nerfed when they needed to. Things were being fixed in terms of just the overall health of PvP and PvE. That the fun aspect was nailed the fun is 5 out of 5, but the story was like a zero. There was nothing that really got me to be super invested like I usually am being a lore nerd. So, yeah. Lightfall gets a 5 out of 10, and that's really all I can really say. There's, <laughs> If you want to have fun, go the hell ahead, pay 50 bucks or 40 bucks for the DLC, and have fun with it. 
if you mostly pay play pvp and you don't care about story this is a great dlc for you i guess if you don't give a damn about lore go the hell ahead because you're gonna have a lot of fun you're just not gonna care about the story <laughs> to wrap this all up i hope you guys enjoyed lightfall in any capacity because I don't want you guys to have a bad time. And uh, if you did have a bad time or you have other criticisms that I may have missed, please leave them in the comments below. I feel that everything could have been better, but some places they couldn't have done any better than they have. So thank you all so much for watching. This is Titan Gains, and I'll see you guys next time. See you later. Go touch grass! An extra special thank you to Redrix and Spider's Little Pog Cham for supporting me on Patreon. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without you all, so thank you so much for your support.